How's it going, everybody? Johnny here. Uh, sorry, it's been a while since I made a video. I know some of you have asked uh, if I was going to make more videos. Uh, I was in and out of the hospital with a bad case of E. coli, and uh, I was kind of out of commission for a while. I'm doing a lot better now. Thanks to everyone that kind of reached out, um, left some nice comments. That was very uh, uplifting, uplifted my spirits. I appreciate it, but I'm doing a lot better now. Um, today's video is about someone who's thinking about getting into a relationship with someone with ME and what that entails, how they should kind of navigate, what they should know. Um, someone left a comment asking that. I thought it would be a great idea to make a video about that. Um, and it's, it, it's a complex question. It, I can make a one hour video about it because there's so many variables to this and I can go on and on about it. But I'm gonna try to keep it very short and just do some very basic suggestions. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say because everyone's different. Um, and every, you know everyone's been through different situations, so I'm interested to see the comment section of this video. But I think the number one thing is to under, learn and understand what this illness is about. Learn the lingo. Learn what post-exertional malaise is, what flares and crashes are. Um, learn what brain fog is. Kind of get a good understanding of, of what this illness is. I think that would mean the world to someone that if they're gonna be in a relationship with you and you came full of knowledge or at least showing that you're trying to understand and learn where they're coming from. I think it's very important to learn about the negative stigma that's out there. Uh, some of the things that, um, that people say are just not true about this illness and there's a lot of misconceptions about the illness, misinformation about the illness and I think it's important for you to learn that and understand that. And I think just that alone would be very meaningful to the person you're going to be in a relationship with. The, the other things are, are pacing and planning. Someone with ME who's going to be in a relationship, they can't, they have to pace themselves and plan in a much different way than someone who's healthy can pace and plan. If you're healthy and you want to go away from the weekend, you pack a, back, a backpack, you hop in the car and you know you, you leave for the weekend, it's very fun and spontaneous. That's almost impossible for someone with ME. And I'm mostly referring to someone who's, who's moderately ill, because I know some people are completely bedridden, some people are able to work, but uh, some people can't work, but they're still somewhat mobile. Um, there's so many variables to this, it's, it's a bit complex. But if you're moderately sick, and you're, you're, you're mostly housebound but mobile, uh, you can't really just go away for the weekend. And, you know, you have to, there's medicine that you have to take, you have to pace yourself, you have to plan your sleeping, your diet. There's all these things that can cause flare-ups. So going into a relationship with someone, know that you can't just have that spontaneous activity that you might be able to have uh, with someone who's totally healthy. Also, I think it's very important to understand that a lot of people with ME and CFS are probably going to get frustrated at times because of their illness. Uh, for example, brain fog, one of the symptoms that you should learn about if you're going to date someone with ME, um, can kind of cause people with ME to be quieter, to be more reserved, to maybe be in a bad mood, uh, maybe short with people, and that's something that if you didn't, if you weren't aware of that, you might take it personal and say, "Wow, this person isn't really into me, or they're mad at me, or they're you know." There's a lot of things you can interpret a lot of different ways. More often than not, they're probably just dealing with symptoms and it's hard for them to deal with it. They're not feeling well, they're kind of quiet. Um, think about it when, when, if you're very healthy and you've ever gotten really sick in your life, being around a lot of people and having conversations and doing stuff and joking around, it's not really something you want to do and you're not feeling well. So keep that in mind. I think that's very important. A lot of, a lot of people don't understand that and that's important to understand. Another thing is that whether a lot of ME sufferers realize this or not, they're probably mourning who they used to be. There is some depression there. See, a lot of us, we were go-getters. We had plans and a future and all these things that we kind of planned out and were doing, and we had to completely change our lives. And some people are in different stages of that, of that mourning, of that acceptance. And a lot of people are still getting to understand that the old them is gone, and then they have to move on and create a new them. That's not to say that some people can't get better and be who they were again. And that's not to say people can't fully recover. 
It's very rare, but some people do fully recover. Some people recover partially. Um, I do think it's irresponsible that some people go around saying there's a cure and you can just, that that's BS in my opinion. There's no blanket cure that works for everyone. There are some things that have gotten people a lot better. Um, and some people have uh, uh, been cured by certain things, but there is no blanket cure out there that you can just go do and you're better. That's just reality. And that's also important for someone to know that um, every day is a new struggle with people with ME. And one more vital important thing is that people with ME, they might look fine one day and have a certain energy level that you find normal one day and the next day they're completely done. They're in bed, they're housebound, they can't do anything. That up and down type of um, roller coaster ride is something that you need to understand going into a relationship with someone with ME. Uh, there's a lot of up and down, um, but I think someone with ME will appreciate you, care about you, love you more than the average person because they will appreciate how considerate you're being by learning, understanding, caring, listening, these are all things that are very important and I think that they will appreciate you so much because people with ME and chronic illnesses in, in general, they need someone to lean on to get better. Um, a chronic illness is, is extremely difficult even if you have a village, um, but if you're by yourself, you don't have someone, but if you really have someone who understands you, who, who believes in you, who encourages you, who gives you space when you need it, who doesn't take it personal if you need your space. and and cares about you, they're going to love you back more than anyone else in the world because they're going to appreciate that uh, so much more than the average person. I mean, that's at least that's what I've seen with people with ME. Their, their love for their partner and their support that they give them is, is unmatched. So I don't want to make it sound like it's this huge, horrendous thing to be with someone with ME. It has its downsides, but I also think you're going to get someone who loves you in a way that most people won't. Um, I would love to hear what you guys have to say and your experiences. I'm sure there's a million other uh, good pieces of advice that I'm leaving out. I don't want to make this too long, so I look forward to reading your guys' experience in the comment section. And uh, until next time, uh, I look forward to reading everything. Take care.